There's this really weird trend that I've noticed over the past year or so where people are using what they're calling headless MacBooks. And uh, that that's a weird term. So what does that mean? Well, basically, if you crack the screen of any MacBook with a Retina display and you want to replace it, it's just astronomically expensive. Even if you get like a 10 year old MacBook Pro, you're looking at two or $300 if you wanna buy a nice replacement display. And obviously a lot of people aren't willing to spend more than the value of their computer just to repair it. So what do you do instead? Well, you take the screen off and use it as a desktop. And that gave me an idea. If you wanted to get an Apple desktop, but save some money, could you just buy a really cheap broken MacBook with a cracked display and use that instead? Well, that's exactly what I did. I bought this late 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro. And as you will soon see, mm, uh, yeah, the, the screen is not doing so hot. But as you can see, it actually turns on and we're booted into Mac OS Big Sur. Now, when I bought this thing, I opened it up and I was surprised to find that it had an SSD installed because I only paid $60 for this listing and the listing actually said that it didn't have an SSD. So that was a fun little bonus. When this thing arrived, I was able to get a fresh copy of Mac OS Big Sur installed. And funny enough, I could actually use the internal display because when you press on the back of it, you can kind of get some of the pixels to show up just a little bit, but uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna need to get rid of this display. But here's the thing, you could just use this in clamshell mode, very easy when you're connected to a monitor, you can just use it as normal. But the problem is you can't use the mouse and keyboard. But if we take the display off, then it is the mouse and keyboard, and it's just a desktop that's also your mouse and keyboard. So let's get into it by cleaning it up and turning this into the ultimate $60 headless MacBook setup. But first, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Pulseway, the perfect tool to keep your server or laptop deployment running from anywhere. Pulseway keeps all your repetitive IT tasks at bay, from system management, automation, and more. Pulseway gives you the freedom to keep tabs on your entire network from anywhere in the world. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection. To get started with Pulseway and to learn more about transforming your IT tasks, check out the links in the description below. A huge thanks to Pulseway for being a supporter of the channel, and now let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's start out this build with a good cleaning. As you would imagine, buying a parts listing from eBay, nobody bothered to clean this thing, so it's definitely a little bit dirty. And when I open it up on the inside, whew, yeah, there's like a full layer of dust on this bottom case and the fans are just completely caked. So yeah, definitely wanna take care of that first. All right, so now we're all cleaned up here and I did notice one flaw inside this machine and that is that one of these standoff screws that the heatsink mounts to has actually come off of the board itself. So that's not ideal. I don't think that's gonna be a huge issue for us, but anyway, that's definitely something to look out for. So let's move on to the conversion process. There's a couple of little rubber pads that go over the screws holding the display on. And we're gonna unscrew two of the three screws on either side. Next, we'll go ahead and disconnect the display from the logic board over here. And over here, we're going to peel back this little rubber fan housing. And this is also something that I think is going to cause us a bit of trouble here. And that is that we have to disconnect the antenna. Now this, this isn't something that I've noticed mentioned in a lot of the media coverage here, but the camera and of course the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas are actually housed in the display. So it seems like we're probably gonna have to run this machine 
over Ethernet. That's a definite downside that not many people seem to talk about in the coverage. Now our next step is gonna be to open the display about 90 degrees and stand the machine up like this. And that's why we left those display screws installed. It makes it a lot easier to remove the display. And actually, you know what? I've forgotten about something. There are these tiny little brackets that are held in with T4 screws. It's just this little tiny piece of aluminum, but it holds the display hinge in place. So we gotta remove those as well. So there you have it. That is the most simple way to make a headless MacBook. It's just the normal thing, but take the screen off and we'll go ahead and put it together by just popping the bottom cover on and there you go. <laughs> It's, a, it's an interesting looking thing, but that should be all we need. All right, so now this should be as easy as plugging in HDMI and hitting the power button. Uh, it's so weird to see the MacBook without a display, but uh, who needs a display? It's a Mac mini now. Gosh, this is so funny. Hello, headless Bob. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it makes sense. Why this would work, there's nothing really that weird going on here. It's just a MacBook without a screen, but seeing the, the normal MacBook layout with a display externally, this is so funny to me. And what's better is this is battery powered, so you can just unplug it from this display and go plug it into your TV, use it as an HTPC without having to restart. Actually, let's check how the battery health is doing. So 509 cycles, condition is normal. That's pretty good, about what you'd expect for an older machine like this, but uh, oh, looks like we're not able to join the Wi-Fi network and that is as I feared because the display is where the Wi-Fi antennas are stored and that's gonna be true on pretty much every single MacBook. So we're gonna need to find a workaround and as far as I can tell, most of the times that this has been done, people just plugged in over ethernet, but I don't really like that. You have yet another thing plugged into the side of what is effectively your mouse and keyboard. It's just, it's kind of ugly. So I took a different route. When I took the display off, I actually took off the clutch cover and disassembled it. As it turns out, the Wi-Fi antennas are attached to the display assembly with some Phillips head screws. So what I did was just take all of those off, cut off the camera so that I could remove the hinge assembly, did the same thing for the display cable, and then I rather haphazardly taped the Wi-Fi antennas into the clutch cover and made this little assembly that we can hopefully screw into the MacBook and get our Wi-Fi back. So let's try that now. So the idea is that I'm gonna use the original hinge mounts that I've taped into this sort of Frankenstein's monster creation here, and we'll see if this is gonna stay still and not look terrible. We only really need one screw on each side and uh, honestly, that's, that's staying in place pretty well. I'm surprised. There we go. That's our once again, further Frankenstein MacBook here. So it doesn't look terrible. It kind of fits where it was originally meant to go, but this side where the display would be is now just tape. So that's not exactly a beautiful aesthetic, but hopefully, We've got our Wi-Fi back now. It's, it's connected to Wi-Fi. Let's run a speed test. <laughs> nice. We're getting, actually that's slightly faster than uh, when I ran it with the screen installed. So that's hilarious. This actually works really, really well. Now I, I personally wouldn't want to keep it like this if I were going to use this machine long term. Honestly, I think it'd be pretty cool if we like 3D printed a little housing that would sort of fit that space better. It actually kind of reminds me of the early iPads when they had cellular and there's just a black bar on the back. It's not a bad look. And if it were a little cleaner and not just, you know, electrical tape, I'd actually kind of dig it. But I'm mainly just happy that we were able to retain all the functionality of the MacBook. We've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, handoff, continuity, all of those things which we would lose if we had to run it over Ethernet through a Thunderbolt adapter, for example. A second there, when I plugged it in and it didn't turn on, I was a little nervous. That's so funny. This is actually really usable because we've got the built-in MacBook speakers that you can use perfectly fine. A backlit keyboard, which is not something that you would find if you used an Apple desktop keyboard. None of those are backlit. And we have a trackpad. It's like the magic trackpad that costs like a hundred bucks. But this entire setup was $60. This is actually kind of cool. You get all the functionality of a laptop, but a huge screen. And I can just 
unplug it, go plug it in somewhere else. It's, it's literally a portable desktop experience. Now I'm not sure how practical this would be to use full time and this is an older machine so it's not exactly powerful but for literally $60 and a bit of tape, I mean, it's kind of fun. So in my opinion, it's not the moral of this video to investigate whether you should or should not decapitate a MacBook. Rather, what I think this idea demonstrates is the lengths that people are willing to go to to keep older machines going. We're not just going to give up. People are out here taking the screens off of MacBooks and turning them into desktops. They're out here making custom boards to turn old iMacs into fully functional external monitors. This is what movements like Right to Repair are all about. It's not just that you should be able to fix your MacBook if you spill water on it. You should be able to decapitate your MacBook and use it as a desktop and plug it into your iMac that had a dead GPU so you took the old crappy logic board out and turned it into a perfectly good monitor. Reuse, reduce, recycle. This is what that's all about. Why buy two new computers when you can combine these and you get a weird and wonderful desktop setup. But on the same token, this speaks to the importance of manufacturers making their products economical to repair. The fact of the matter is I bought this MacBook Pro for $60 with a cracked display. And if I wanted to repair it, economically, there's not that many options. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you wanted to go and buy a display, you're looking at about 200 to $300. And that is more than this entire machine is worth when it's all put together. So even though I got this thing for ridiculously cheap and it came with the SSD that I wasn't expecting, which would save me more money, it's still not economical to repair this thing because the displays are just too expensive. And why are they too expensive? Well, because the only place that you can get them is from other MacBook Pros. And they're the most fragile component. They are the most in-demand component to replace. So yes, part of it is that Apple displays are really, really good and therefore really, really expensive. But also it's because there's just not that many of them to go around. If Apple sold the parts to repair these things, I'm sure they wouldn't be cheap, but it would increase the amount of them that are out there. It would mean that people don't have to turn to scavenging for good displays from other broken machines. So experiments like this are more than just a novel way to repurpose your old machine or buy a really cheap desktop. They are commentaries on the state of electronics repair and how difficult it is to just fix something. I would need to make a weird headless MacBook if I could just buy a display at a reasonable cost. So I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Is this a project that you think is worth doing? What would you change? Obviously, retaping this uh, antenna is probably on my list. And do you think Apple has an obligation to make parts more available so that we don't have to do stuff like this? Definitely let me know down in the comments below. And of course, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.